Hello and welcome back to another episode of What's in the Word with evangelist Kevin Wagner and myself, Joshua Wagner. And we are almost finished, Dad, with the book of Acts. Getting close. Getting close. This <laughs> is the penultimate chapter, yeah. Acts 27. Mm -hmm. You remember from last time that Paul had stood trial before Felix and Festus and King Agrippa. And based on his appeal to Caesar, he is headed to Rome. Yeah. And Acts 27 begins this journey <sighs> from the Holy Land to Rome. And so, uh, Dad, to start us off with, why don't you just read the first two verses for us of Acts 27. When it was decided that we would sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius who belonged to the Imperial Regiment. We boarded a ship from Adramidium about to sail for ports along the coast of the province of Asia. And we put out to sea. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. Okay, so a uh, couple things here. One, just as a reminder, the author of Acts is the, the Dr. Luke. Uh, very detailed. Mm -hmm. We're going to see this in chapter 27, that his um, grasp and use of nautical terms... Um, and the, the, the way that he describes the events taking place in Acts 27 is really quite impressive. Yeah. Um, you know, we've talked previously about how this is the highest level of Greek that's used in the New Testament is what's found in the book of Luke and the book of <coughs> Acts, which makes sense coming from the most educated of the authors. Um, and, but he seems to have a real sharp ability as it pertains to even the discussion of these places and their journeys. Um, you know, Dad, something that stands out to me, and this takes me all the way back to when I did Bible quiz, back into, uh, you know, the year 2007, when we quizzed over the book of Acts and yeah. memorized the book of Acts, is um, there's a question there, and it was, it was a question, and it would go, you know, quote the verse that mentions the Italian regiment and quote the verse which uh, mentions the imperial regiment. Isn't that good? And so what you'll see here is... We have another centurion, mm. uh, Julius, who's different than the centurion. That's right. That we met back in Acts chapter yeah. 10. That centurion, Cornelius, <laughs> the first convert to, uh, Gentile convert to Christianity, he was the centurion over the Italian regiment. Right. And then this yeah. Julius centurion, this centurion, Julius, was the centurion over the imperial regiment. Yeah. Okay. So it's just an interesting thing to note about That's these awesome. two different named uh, centurions over different regiments in the Roman army. And you know, when you look at another person, this is just such, such an awesome thing about the, the Bible. It's so historical and it's all true. Like it's rooted in history. It's not myth or legend. You've got these people that Luke names uh, <clears throat> popping up from time to time. Yes. Julius is the first time we've met him. But here's another old friend. That's right. This is Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica. Just in case we forgot, but we didn't forget. No. Uh, Acts 17, Josh, or, um, Paul, the Apostle Paul, is preaching in Thessalonica. Yeah. And uh, great, God did great things there. And then later on in Acts 19, when Paul is in Ephesus, it talks about how, um, how Aristarch, or pardon me, uh, yeah, Aristarchus, was uh, from Macedonia, was with Paul during that riot in Ephesus. So in yeah. Acts 19, verse uh, 29, it says that the people seized Gaius and Aristarchus, Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia. And so they took them yeah. kind of as, as hostages for a little bit during mm -hmm. that, that raid. And then later on it says in Acts 20, it says that Aristarchus and Secundus from Thessalonica so same guy from Macedonia, yep. Thessalonica. Uh, he was one of the people who was with Paul when he decided to go back uh, through Macedonia and Greece on the way back to Jerusalem. Yep. So you've got this guy, Aristarchus, who got, probably got saved in Thessalonica. Yes. No one else, had, it was virgin territory. He probably got saved there as a young man, uh, seemingly because he, it doesn't talk about him bringing his family along. And he went... Uh, he was with Paul in Ephesus yep. and he got, you know, taken hostage in the riot. Yes. He got released and then didn't deter his courage. He went straight from there on to uh, the next mission trip, the next adventure for, for a believer. And he went on with Paul and now he's still with them. Yeah. 
Like, I don't know. Exactly. Was he with them for two years in Caesarea? I don't know. We don't know. Yeah. But we know that he's with them now. On, he's sailing for Rome with, with Paul. And, you know, these. this is just one of many sons in the faith that Paul raised up. We see so many of these people in the book of Acts and in the letters of St. Paul. These men who God uh, brought alongside Paul and that Paul trained up. And long after Paul is dead and gone, the ministry is continuing through these great men of God. And I mean, like we see this in our own ministry. Yeah. Like we've been doing this now for over 20 years. And we, ha we have people all over these countries where we go and preach that, uh, that you know, show up time and time again into our lives. That's and right. it's wonderful. It like, is wonderful. It, there's such great uh, encouragements to us. Like I'm sure Luke and Aristarchus were such gr great encouragements to Paul. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's move from verses 3 through 8 now. The next day we landed at Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. From there we put out to sea again and passed to the Lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. When uh, we had sailed across the open sea off the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving off of Sinaitis. When the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete, opposite Salmoni. We moved along the coast of Fair Dif with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens near the town of Lycia. Okay, so, you know, as I referenced earlier, you've got a lot of places and locations. You've got a lot of nautical terminology and people who would have been <laughs> familiar with this route traveling along the you know in the mediterranean from uh you know israel to italy would have been familiar with the things uh, that luke's describing here uh, just a couple things to mention we can see here that uh julius the the centurion was kind to paul allowing yeah, him amen. to visit his friends to care for his needs paul always had a lot of really great favor with the amen. roman leadership and uh, the fact that he was a roman citizen <clears throat> certainly would have been uh, a part of that, but we believe that God favors his people. And Amen. Uh, even those who are not Christians can still be moved by the hand of God to favor yeah. uh, his, his people. That's true. And so I love seeing that. Um, Alexandrian ship. So Paul changes ships. Alexandria, which is on the northern coast of Egypt, right there on the Mediterranean, uh, the ancient city of Alexandria. And so this ship would have traveled, it's had a route that was going uh, where he he put him on this ship and then went further on towards mm -hmm. um, towards the uh, to Italy. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's. Or anything you wanted to share? Or? I think that's yeah. Good. Okay. So let's move on. Let's read verses um, nine through twelve. Much time had been lost, and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the fast. So Paul warned them. Man, I can see that our voyage is going to be uh, disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete facing both southwest and northwest. Okay, so um, it says much time had been lost because by now it was after the fast. Sure. Th this fast is a <clears throat> reference to uh, Yom Kippur, the, the yeah. Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, one of the the holy days. Of, I think really the most holy day. Most for, holy day for the yeah. for the Jewish people. The and Jewish typically, people. it's in September. Right. And so what happens is at at that time of the year, you know, it's starting to get colder. Uh, winter is starting to set in, and when it does, the, the, the waters become choppier, right. the winds become more forceful. It is not the time of year, typically, that you begin to, or that you're sailing. And so we can see that they are now in a more dangerous situation. Yeah. And Paul, he warns them. Yeah, of course. He warns them, and of course, this is a prophetic word. Yeah. Um, it is uh, it is something he <clears throat> he would not know in the natural because mm -hmm. in the natural who's going to know better Paul who's not a sailor right. and not a, a centurion who does this on a regular mm -hmm. on the regular rather it would be the the experts it would be the professionals who would know so yeah. Paul he is getting here a word from the Lord Amen 
And, uh, and again, it says that instead of listening to Paul, uh, the centurion followed the advice of the pilot. So this is, I think that this is a thing we can see. Julius, if I'm preaching a sermon on this, I'm like, here's the character development. Julius is obviously not a Christian. When he starts, he sh God starts moving on him. Here he's, sh he's starting to show favor with Paul earlier mm -hmm. on. Now he doesn't, he, he's, he doesn't trust Paul yet, but boy, I tell you, after he sees what happened where he went with the pilot over Paul, yeah. like, again, it, you, you got to think that the Holy Spirit really started um, showing Julius, hey, there's something going on in this guy. There's a special guy, and you should really take uh, his advice to heart. Like the things that he tells yeah. you, they're, vo they're words from God. That's right. Yeah, the, Julius, as we will see, the, they <clears throat> will pay the price for not listening they sure to will. Paul. But also they will learn a lesson mm -hmm. um, that, that, as Dad said, that you need to heed this word, this man's words. Yeah. Um, and what, what I would say just too, as we wrap this up is an encouragement to you is, is, you know, we still believe that God speaks to his people today in all matters of 100%. our lives. We know that the gifts of the spirit are still in use for today. Of and so God is still giving words of prophecy to his people. And, you know, I think that we will get to heaven one day, dad, and we will become aware of the many miracles that God did that were preventative. Yes, you know, 100%. We, we of course can share many things of what God has done, yeah. but there are many miracles we don't even know, many things that God saved us from by saying, okay, you know, take this way to work instead of this way to work yeah. and, and book this flight instead of this flight. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of these different things that are God's workings that we don't even realize that the ways that God has saved mm -hmm. us and protected us and um, and what I would encourage you though also to do is seek the face of God in all of these different details of your lives. Ask the Lord, Lord, do you want me to go here? You want me to go there? You do this trip, work at this place, whatever it may be. God cares about all those little details. And if we're listening, God's going to communicate to us the same way that he did to Paul. And he can say, hey, do not go on this trip. Do not go this way because you will face disaster if you do. Josh, you're 100% right. And listen, for you watching here, if you're sitting here thinking, well, I don't hear from God the way Paul does or, mm -hmm. or, or and this sort of thing. Look, but you can. Yes. This is the good news of the Bible. Paul, the same Paul in 1 Corinthians uh, 12, uh, he tells us about the spiritual gifts. He talks to us about prophecy and yeah. the gift, the word of knowledge. That's right. And he says, eagerly desire these spiritual gifts. That's right. And he wouldn't tell us that if God wasn't also eager to give them to us. So if you're here today watching, you say, I want to hear God's voice better. Mm. I want to hear preventative words of prophecy. Right. I want to hear predictive things so that I can move into God's uh, you know, perfect will for my life. Then ask God. Jesus says in the Gospels that which of you uh, fathers, if your son asks him for a, you know, a, a fish or a stone or a fish or a piece of bread, are you going to give him a rock or a scorpion? Yeah. He says, how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask That's him? Right. So for you today, hearing from God is not just something for the Apostle Paul or from super Christians that you know out there. No, you're a super Christian. We're all on the same level. At, uh, we're all on yep. the same level, level at the foot of the cross. And when it comes to hearing from God, Jesus wants you to hear that exactly the same as, as That's right. the Apostle Paul. The same Holy Spirit who lived in Paul lives in you. Yeah. And so you have the same access to Jesus as Paul did, all of that. And so just be, yeah, be encouraged, um, you know. And so many people, they say, well, I've never heard from God. I say, well, have you ever stopped to listen? <laughs> I've never heard from God. Well, I've ne have you ever asked God to, to speak in such a specific way? J James says you have not because you ask not. There so many go. people have not received because they've never even asked. <clears throat> yeah. And so Jesus says, look, if you seek, you will find. If you ask, uh, you shall receive. And if you knock, the door will be open to you. So we just encourage you today. Ask. Ask for the gifts of the Spirit to be manifest in your mm -hmm. life. Ask for God to speak in clear uh, ways to you. And then take time to listen to the Lord, to hear his still Amen. small voice Amen. speaking to you in your lives today. And that is what's in the word.